that it's not one of their best races, but uh, most people do have difficulty in finding the winner, to the winner. And some of those 38 now are behind me here in the parade ring, and here to talk about them is one of our commentators, Clive Graham. And uh, you've got to agree with uh, David that this is a real uh, bumper crowd, like, like the crowds that used to come here years ago, maybe because they've been drawn here by the fear that this might be the last Grand National we shall ever see. And uh, that's Kanharis, the great noise with the bandages. And uh, walking around here has been that mountainous horse, uh, Richelieu. Thirty-eight runners. And here is Charlie Winking from the West Country. Charlie Winking, number 36, ridden by the very capable amateur rider David Scott, winner of the National Hunt Chase over four miles at Cheltenham last season, a winner at Newton Abbott this season. Charlie Winking by Vulgan, number 36. Vulgan, great sire of jumpers, and of course he's had the national winners, uh, Team Spirit and Gay Trip. Colour Hill, one of the, the Irish uh, challengers, the Mount of Norton Brooks, trained by Toss Taff, and this horse beat Lescargo at Listol in September. And the uh, jocks beginning to file out, they're getting uh, plenty of time, looking some of them already a little bit grim, they'll be relaxing, and uh, there comes the, the Spanish Duke of Albuquerque. What a brave fellow he is. Johnny Hayne. Oakley, uh, John Oaksey, Pat Buckley, John Oaksey. Philip Blacker, Spanish Steps' his jockey, puffing his uh, cheeks out a bit. Now it's now or never. This is the... I, a lot of them say this is the grimmest moment of all when you leave the, the weighing room and you know now that uh, you're on your way. And there the uh, stipendiary steward, Colonel John Christian. Joe Mercer, the flat race jockey. David Nicholson, the rider of Highland Seal. And it seems to be a temporary block, a halt. And uh, they're not circulating. Perhaps there are a bit too many in, uh, in the uh, parade ring for... You can see in front of me, right in front of me down here, is Princess Camilla. She looks extra well. the betting in anyone's uh, guess who will be the eventual favorite because this is a race where the the public money begins to come down via the blower in the, the last five or ten minutes and they're out on the, the course still the crowds coming in here that's the the view in the distance of the first six fences the weather just slightly murky, um, away out in the distance. The only grey in the race, grey sombrero, and he's the one that'll probably cut out the uh, the pace. And there he is, grey sombrero. He's been very lightly raced this season, but he's none the worse for that. At Sandown, ridden by. Bill Schumark and trained by David Gandolfo. Grey sombrero. And here's Red Rum, trained by Donald McCain. He's also got Glen Kiln. And he had a disturbed night, the trainer did, because there was someone uh, reported that the, the stables were on fire at half past 11 at night, and he had to uh, rouse himself out of bed. He said he just uh, dropped off into a, a dreamless uh, sleep. And Red Rum playing up a little bit, just to show uh, that he's uh, 
full of the joys of spring and he's a 12 to 1 favourite. 12 to 1 favourite, Red Rum, a winner of five races this season. And he's accompanied to post by Glen Kiln. Glen Kiln number seven, Red Rum number eight. He won the William Hill trial here in October. He made all the running, so this uh, horse we expect to see up uh, with the leaders in the early stages. Grey Sombrero is another front runner, so is Spanish Steps. It'll probably be a terrific pace today. Glen Kiln, um, a 10-year-old, Red Rum, an 8-year-old. And the Red Rum, the 12 to 1 favourite. Spanish Steps is jockey, and there is Spanish Steps, the horse, who will be carrying the maroon and yellow colours of Mr. Edward Courage. This horse by flush roll out of Tiberetta, the mare who uh, performed with distinction in this race herself. Philip Blacker, the rider of this horse, who's won more than £34,000 in stakes. And in the background, you can see Rough Silk's name cloth. And here's Asheville, and he's joint favourite with Red Rum at 12 to 1 from 14 to 1. Asheville carrying the second colours, and Princess Camilla too. So uh, the punters and bookmakers can't agree yet on a definite favourite. Asheville, the minor course of Jeff King, carrying second colours. Lescargo carrying Raymond Guest's first colours with the light blue cap. Lescargo trained in Ireland by Dan Moore. Asheville trained by Tom Jones at Newmarket. And Raymond Guest, a lucky owner. He won that uh, derby with Larkspur when a half a dozen horses fell on Tattenham Corner. And, of course, he won it again with that great horse, Sir Ivor. Rouge Autumn just in front of us here. This... Uh, Died in the wool stayer. <laughs> Petruccio's son in the background, number 13. He's going to be ridden by David Mould. He's trained by Miss Susan Morris, the only member of our sex to have a runner in this race as trainer. And he was a winner early in the season, this horse, but he uh, cut no ice at all behind Asheville at Cheltenham. Petruccio's son, and number 13. One of the uh, long shots. You know... <laughs> A wide open race. And the bell ringing signal for the jockeys to mount. And here's Crisp. He's come all the way from Australia, far America, to wind up a couple of years ago at Fred Winter's stable. And he, of course, is the mount of Richard Pittman. Joint top weight with Les Gargo, both set to carry 12 stone. A weight that hasn't been carried to success since before the war. End of and here, John Oakes's mount, proud Tarquin, 10 year old, same age as Crisp and Lescargo. He's a temperamental sort of horse, this. He, he, likes, he doesn't like being pushed into his fences, he likes to decide when or where he's going to jump uh, under his own steam. That's Tommy Carberry just went through there. Tommy Carberry, the rider of Les Cargo. Proud Dark with much the same chance on some form as Red Rum. There's Les Cargo, just, well, he was just, just went through our picture there. And that's Princess Camilla in John Biggs colors, the carriage success with Oxo in 1959. Fine big mare this by Prince Baal, and she's won over four miles and a bit at Warwick. So uh, she's got the reputation of being a real good stayer, and Walter Wharton is turning her out looking a picture. And of course she's got uh, the first class assistance in the saddle from Ron Barry, who's having a tremendously successful season. 31, Princess Camilla. And here's Lescargo, twice winner of the Cheltenham Gold Cup. Our winner at uh, Haydock this season beat Spanish Steps. Uh, it was a very close thing, and uh, the honours really went to Spanish Steps. 
He ran quite well in the Gold Cup the other day in Escargo, ridden by his usual pilot, Tom Carberry, trained in Ireland by Dan Moore. Crisp just in the foreground there, then Spanish steps following along behind Lescargo. There's Crisp and Richard Pittman. It's great because he's wearing bandages again, but he normally does. Uh, 15, General Simons, who did hit him for third place last season. Now, news of the betting. Redrum and uh, Petruccio's son, and uh, the smallest horse in the race will be uh, Nerio, the Spanish bred, bound to the Duke of Albuquerque. And there he is, this uh, seven year old. Well, we haven't got the overweights here uh, on our number board in the, in the paddock yet, but uh, I should imagine the Duke uh, will not be able to do 10 stone, uh, and it'll be a number of overweights that uh, Peter will be able to read out to you. Prophecy. And Bob Davis. Bob has no difficulty uh, making that way to 10 stone one. Trained by David Barons. He's a horse who's won four races this season. He seems to stay really well as he should. He's by Zarathustra, who won the Ascot Gold Cup. The hands of Harry Carr. Prophecy number 12, a 10 year old. And Crisp, another, has joined the list of joint favourites. Crisp, 12 to 1 from 14 to 1. It looks as if there'll be four joint favourites. There's Black Secret, a horse who's a real entry specialist. He's been placed uh, twice. He was second two years ago to specify and dead heated with General Simons last year for third. 13 Petruccio's son. Asheville slipped out a little bit to 14 to 1 from 12 to 1. There's the Puka who ran well up to the 24th fence last year. He's one of the several horses in this race who has got a number of owners. He's got a dozen owners. The Puka and Arthur Moore, Dan Moore's son. Now they are, there they go, there's Highland Seal. They're beginning to file out towards the race course for this 1973 Grand National. This is Sonny Laird, Bill Smith. And behind him is Beggar's Way. Then in the spots, Pat Buckley on Ken Harris. Then Prophecy, with uh, Bob Davis putting up two pounds overweight. Then David Mould on Petruccio's son, putting up five pounds overweight. Then the Puka. Behind the Puka is General Simons. And then David Nicholson on his 13th national ride and putting up six pounds overweight on Highland Seal, being followed by John Hayne putting up two pound overweight on Mr. Vimy. And behind him in the crossbelts, Rouge Autumn, Ken White. And then Asprey, Jimmy Burke. Behind him is Tarquin Bid. Then those bold striped sleeves, Bob Champion, Hurricane Rock. Behind him is Rough Silk. Then comes Richelieu, the tallest horse in the race, and behind him, Endless Folly. Then Princess Camilla, with Ron Barry putting up four pounds overweight. And behind him, Swan Shot, Martin Blackshaw. Then Rampsman, behind Rampsman is Fortune Bay, with George Sloan, his American owner rider, putting up three pounds overweight. Then in the hoops, Asheville, stable, the uh, same ownership, of course, as Glasgow. Then Great Noise. Behind Great Noise is Proud Percy. Behind Proud Percy is the Duke of Albuquerque on Nerio, putting up three pounds overweight. Then comes Colour Hill, seven pounds overweight, uh, Mr. Norton Brooks, and behind him, Green Plover. This is Charlie Winking. And then the hoop sleeves there, those of Go Continental, with uh, Jimmy McNaught putting up four pounds overweight. So just to go through the overweights once again, Prophecy two over, Petruccio's son five over, Highland Seal six over, Mr. Vimy two pounds over, 
Bow Park, one pound over. Asheville, four pounds over. Great Noise, two pounds over. Mildor, five pounds over. Princess Camilla, four pounds over. Fortune Bay, three pounds over. Nerio, three pounds over. Color Hill, seven pounds over. And Go Continental, four pounds over. And uh, the starter, John Hancock, surveying these 38 runners. That's great noise, walking right. His late substitute rider, Dave Cartwright. The spots there, Black Secret, walking behind Spanish Steps. In front of uh, Spanish Steps is Lescargo. Then Glenn Kiln, one of the two hopes of 85-year-old Henry Lemaire, being written by the youngest rider, 20-year-old John Joe O'Neill. And that's his stable companion, Red Rum, written by Brian Fletcher, 25 years old having his sixth national ride and being followed by 24-year-old Bill Smith on his second national ride, Sonny Ladd, a course winner over a shorter distance. And he's followed by Beggar's Way, another of the hopes for Ireland, trained by Pat Taff, who himself rode two national winners. Second ride for Tommy Kinane. Followed by Ken Harris, ninth ride for 30-year-old Pat Buckley, who's already won it on Aola. This is the reigning champion, uh, Bob Davis, on Prophecy, putting up two pounds overweight on his second national ride. He's 26, Bob. That's the only one trained uh, by a woman, trained by Miss Susan Morris, Petruccio's son. Eighth ride for 32-year-old David Mould. This is Gray Sombrero, trying to become the first grey to win since Nicholas Silva, who was himself the first grey to win since the Lamb in 1871. Brown Jinx is per Asprey and uh, Rouge Autumn. Asprey, the Czech cap, Rouge Autumn, the white cap. And those checks, Mildor, offered for sale uh, this morning for £950. Tarquin bid to his right. Between the two, the tallest horse, Richelieu, who hasn't fallen in 39 races. That's Asheville to the far left of the fence. Hurricane Rock next to him. This is Richelieu jogging back from it with Tarquin Bid. Spot is number number 25. There's Princess Camilla going up to have a look at it. With the cross belts there, those of Rampsman. And Princess Camilla 15 to 1 from 14 to 1. That's Green Plover. Mr. Michael or Miles Morris, 21 years old, having his second ride. Red Rum now 10 to 1 co favourite from 12 to 1 with Crisp. This is Endless Folly, former hunter chaser. Sixth ride for Joe Guest. And there to the left is the, the Duke of Albuquerque. Of all the hungry looking riders I saw leaving the weighing room, uh, none looked hungrier than the Sporting Duke. He's really wasted down to his absolute leanest. It's a tall frame, wasted down to be able to ride this little seven-year-old that he bred himself in Spain, Nerio, at ten stone three. And Red Rum... The locally trained Red Rum, trained by Don McCain at... Southport, that's his stable companion, number seven, Glenn Kiln, and there is Red Run and 25-year-old Brown Fletcher bidding to win this for 85-year-old Noel Lemaire, local man. It's Black Secret of the Spots next to him, who certainly knows his way around. He's been second and third, and in the spots, Can Harris, Pat Buckley. Crossbelts, Rouge Autumn with his back to us is Fortune Bay. Gray, Gray Sombrero, walking right, General Simons. And Red Rum has just eased a little now to 9 to 1. That's Petruccio's son, centre, David Mould, trained by Miss Susan Morris. Crucio's son on the 13 mark uh, chase wise has won 13 chases and two races over hurdles. Swan shot, a 
21 race winner, including successes on the flat and over hurdles. Number 20, Swan Shot. And Martin Blackshaw riding today on the flat and over hurdles, as well as in the national, is 22 year old. There's Crisp and Richard Pittman. Richard in the check cap on this co top weight. And Gray Sombrero, winner of eight chases, usually a front runner, will a 32 year old Bill Schumach on his second national ride set out, make all the running. Hurricane Rock going right. There's Lescargo, eighth ride for 31 year old Tommy Carberry, son in law of Lescargo's trainer, Dan Moore. Lescargo, a dual winner of the Gold Cup, seeking to become the first Gold Cup national winner since Golden Miller in 1954. And David Nicholson, currently dismounted from Highland Seal. It's Prophecy walking by him and Ken Harris. And Sonny Ladd, Beggar's Way. Nerio nearest to us, number 38. Bill Park walking right. And Red Rum, 9 to 1. Crisp, 10 to 1. Asheville and Lescargo, 14 to 1. Princess Camilla and Can Harris, 16 to 1. And 18 to 1 bar. David uh, Nicholson just uh, getting remounted on Highland Seal. And very soon now, these 38 runners will be under starter's orders for the Grand National. As they run down across the Melling Road, I'll be handing you over to John Hanmer, who'll be seeing them over the first three fences. Then as they run down towards Beechers, he'll be handing to Julian Wilson, who'll see them over Beechers, the Canal, Valentines, and uh, back up the straight towards the stands, where John will pick them up over two ditches, and then across the Melling Road, uh, he'll be uh, handing back to me, where we'll see them jump two plain fences, as they're termed, and then the chair, one of the most intimidating number 15 then the water number 16 then they repass the grand national start to go down into the country on the second circuit second and final circuit and the starter going across now towards his rostrum and the official with the white flag has it poised at any moment it'll be raised and the 38 runners for the 1973 grand national will be under starter's orders no draw for places. Bill Smith making his way to the inside on Sonny Laird with Rouge Autumn and Hurricane Rock. And Red Rum and Chris co-favorites at 9-1 to one as the white flag is raised. They're being called in and Rough Silk has unseated his rider. Rough Silk has unseated his rider. Tim Norman. Tim who won it at his first attempt on a 50-1 to one shock winner having his fourth ride. He's soon reunited, just uh, brushed off by the tapes there, 29-year-old Tim. That's David Nicholson, Island Seal, looking actually across to the starter. Mr. Vimy is out of line. They won't go until he's uh, come and joined them. David turning Highland Seal. Ron Barry just coming in on Princess Camilla. And uh, this looks a possibility now. And they're away. They're off, and Rouge Autumn starts fast on the inside with Sonny Laird, and uh, Go Continental moving up on the outside with Beggar's Way. Then comes Black Secret with General Simons on his outside, and Richelieu and Glenn Kiln, and it's Rouge Autumn leading them. Crisp has gone right up there with Sonny Laird on the inside, then comes Hurricane Rock, then Mildor over on the far side with Endless Folly and Beggar's Way and Black Secret, and with Rouge Autumn disputing it, they come to the first, and we join John Hanman. Black Secret, one of the leaders along with General Simons, they're at the first now, and Black Secret over in the lead, there's a fuller Richelieu has gone at the first, and as they go towards the second, Grey Sombrero on the outside along with Asheville, then Glen Kiln, then comes Black Secret, General Simons, then Highland Seal, as they jump the second, 
no falls at the second that I can see and as they go to the third Grey Sombrero on the outside from Asheville Black Secret Crisp General Simons over the ditch and Grey Sombrero over first there's a faller at that one Asheville fell at that and going to the fourth Grey Sombrero in the lead and over to Julian Wilson and spread right across the course with Grey Sombrero the leader over that one from Endless Folly in the centre Black Secret towards the outside Highland Seal just scrambled over that one Crisp is right up there on the inside as they race down towards the fifth Grey Sombrero right on the wide outside he leads over it from on the inside Crisp then Rouge Autumn and Mill Door on the inside Behind this comes Hurricane Rock and Sunny Lad, but as they race down towards Beaches, it's the Grey, Grey Sombrero, racing wide of the field, the clear leader from Crisp in second, Black Secret third, and at Beaches, Grey Sombrero over and just clears it from Crisp in second, Black Secret third, Endless Folly four, Sunny Lad five, Rouge Autumn is six, and Beggar's Way is a faller at Beaches. And just about all the others have gone over it as they go over the next, with Crisp now the leader from Grey Sombrero, then Black Secret and Endless Folly, Sunny Loud and Rouge Autumn, then Hurricane Rock, then Great Noise towards the outside and Tarquin Bid as they come towards the canal turn. And Swan Shot balked and, uh, at the last one, and Mr. Vimy has refused as they jump the canal turn. Nerio has been pulled up and Crisp is the leader from Grey Sombrero as they jump Valentine's. Crisp over Valentine's from Grey Sombrero, Black Secret, Endless Folly, Sunny Lad, then Rouge Autumn, then Hurricane Rock on the inside of Great Noise, Mill Door and Tarquin Bid, then after that comes Spanish Steps, Highland Seal has been pulled up as they jump the next. Crisp over it from Grey Sombrero, Black Secret, Endless Folly, Sunny Lad, Rouge Autumn, Great Noise, Hurricane Rock, Mill Door, Darkwin Bed as we rejoin John Hanmer. Crisp in the lead from Grey Sombrero, Endless Folly, Black Secret, Great Noise. Then comes Rouge Autumn, Sunny Lad. Behind the Sunny Lad is Hurricane Rock. And as they go towards the next fence, it's Crisp, the clear leader from Grey Sombrero, Endless Folly, Black Secret. Then comes Great Noise. Behind Great Noise is Sunny Lad, then Rouge Autumn. Then comes Tarquin Bid. Behind Tarquin Bid, Red Rum, then Spanish Steps, then Hurricane Rock and Glen Kiln, as they, and as they go across the Milling Road, it's Crisp and a clear lead from Grey Sombrero, and Endless Folly, and over to Peter O'Sullivan. And it's Crisp still well clear from Grey Sombrero, then comes Endless Folly, then Black Secret, then Tarquin Bed, then Rouge Autumn, then Sunny Lad, then Rum just in behind the leaders, Glen Kiln also, then Spanish Steps, then Hurricane Rock, and behind them come Proud Tarquin, behind Proud Tarquin is Proud Percy, then comes Les Gargo, behind Les Gargo is Go Continental, and then Asprey, and behind Asprey is Princess Camilla, and then Patricio's son behind Crisp, clear. Crisp is over from Grey Sombrero jumps it second, Endless Folly jumps it third, then Great Noise four, five is Black Secret, six is Rouge Autumn, seven Spanish Steps and eight Tarquin Bid and nine Red Rum and ten on the inside is Sunny Lad as they come to the next. Crisp over in the lead and clear of Grey Sombrero, Endless Folly, Black Secret, Rouge Autumn, Tarquin Bid, Great Noise, Sunny Lad, behind Sunny Lad is Hurricane Rock and Proud Tarquin, Red Rum well there and then comes Glen Kiln and coming to the chair now, this is one of the biggest and Crisp is here. Prick jumps it beautifully in the lead. He just pecked a little bit but got away with it. Grace Umbrero was full. very near. He's gone. Grace Umbrero was gone at that one. Grace Umbrero faller. Glenn Kiln's a faller. Proud Percy's a faller at that one also. And as they jump the water, Crisp is a long way clear of Endless Folly. And at Endless Folly jumps it second. Then comes Red Rum. Behind Red Rum is Rouge Autumn. Then Sunny Lad. Can Harris is a faller. Then comes Great Noise. Behind Great Noise is Spanish Steps and Black Secret and Hurricane Rock. Then Tarquin. Bid and Proud Tarquin and then Princess Camilla and Petruccio's son and then General Simons and as they run down to the Melling Road Crisp is a long way clear of the remainder headed at the moment by Endless Folly, Rouge Autumn, Red Rum, then Sunny Land and Great Noise and Spanish Steps and Tarquin Bid, Proud Tarquin, then comes Black Secret, then Princess Camilla and Hurricane Rock and as they come to the next it's back to John Hanmer. And Crisp just jumping the 17th, he's over jumped it beautifully a long way clear off at Rouge Autumn, Red Rum, Spanish Steps, Endless Folly still there. Then comes Great Noise and Black Secret, behind Black Secret, Hurricane Rock. Meanwhile, Crisp at the 18th and over safely, well clear of Rouge Autumn. Then comes Red Rum, Tarquin Bid, Spanish Steps, Endless Folly, Great Noise, Black Secret, Hurricane Rock. Meanwhile, Crisp at the ditch, the 19th. He stood right back, he jumped it well, and he's right out in front still of Red Rum second. Rouge Autumn is third, Spanish Steps fourth, Tarquin Bid is fifth, Great Noise is Folly and Black Secret, and over to Julian Wilson.
And Richard Pittman over that one on Crispin. What a fantastic ride he's having. I can't remember a horse so far ahead in the Grand National at this stage. Jumping that second was Red Rum. Then Spanish Steps on the outside of Rouge Autumn. Great noise made a mistake there. But coming to the next, and Crisp is over that one. Safely over the one before Beaches from Red Rum. Then Spanish Steps and Tarquin Bid. Rouge Autumn and Hurricane Rock. Then Black Secret and Great Noise. And Tarquin Bid's gone at that one as Crisp comes on his own to Beaches Brook for the second time. Crisp, the top weight, Richard Pitt over it in tremendous style and he's about 20 lengths clear from Red Rum in second place behind this comes Spanish Steps then Hurricane Rock and Rouge Autumn they're over Beaches now then Black Secret over then Great Noise and Crisp is over the 23rd already and racing down to the canal turn as Red Rum jumps the 23rd in second place then Spanish Steps Hurricane Rock Rouge Autumn then Black Secret Great Noise on the outside of Proud Tarquin as Crisp jumps the canal turn and he's over it clear he's still 20 lengths clear from Red Rum in second. Spanish Steps is third. Hurricane Rock four. Rouge Autumn is five. Then Proud Tarquin on the inside of his stable mate. Black Secret. Behind this comes Great Noise and Princess Camilla. Then the Puka and then Folly as Crisp jumps clear at Ballantyne's. Crisp is still a long, long way ahead from Red Rum second and Crisp over that one, the one after Valentine's from Red Rum in second place. Spanish Steps is third, Hurricane Rock four, Rouge Autumn is five, Proud Tarquin is six, Black Secret is seven, Great Noise is eight, Princess Camilla nine, then the Puka and Lescaga who's still there, Endless Folly, Prophecy and Pedrucchio's son who are clear as we rejoin John Hammer. Crisp's got three to jump, he's well clear of Red Rum, he's made a bit of ground, Spanish Steps is third, Hurricane Rock is fourth. Over the third from home, Crisp over safely, Red Rum in second place, then Spanish Steps, Hurricane Rock just passing Spanish Steps. Then comes Rouge Autumn fifth and they're a long way clear of Proud Tarpin, Black Secret and Lescaga. And as they go across the Milling Road with two to jump, it's Crisp with Red Rum in second place making ground but a very long gap after that to Hurricane Rock, Spanish Steps and Rouge Autumn and back to Pedro Sullivan. And he's conceding one stone nine to his pursuer, Crisp. It's Crisp in the lead from Red Rum, but Red Rum still making ground on him. Brown Fletcher on Red Rum, chasing Dick Pickman on Crisp. Crisp still well clear with two fences left to jump in the 1973 National. And this great Australian chaser, Crisp, with 12 stone on his back and 10 stone five on the back of Red Rum, who's chasing him. And they look to have it absolutely to themselves. At the second last, and Crisp is over and clear of Red Rum, who's just jumping it. A long way back in third are Spanish Steps and Hurricane Rock and Rouge Autumn and then Lascago but coming to the final fence in the National now and it's Crisp still going in great style with 12 stories back he jumps it well Red Rum is about 15 lengths behind him as he jumps it and Dick Pittman coming to the elbow now in the National he's got 250 yards to run and Crisp just wandering a little off a two line now he's beginning to lose concentration he's been out there on his own for so long and Red Rum is making ground on him still as they come to the line it's a hunt for a longer run now 200 yards now for Crisp and Red Rum still closing on him and Crisp is getting very tired and Red Rum is pounding after him. Red Rum is the one that's finishing the strongest. He's going to get up. Red Rum is going to win the national and at the line Red Rum has just snatched it from Crisp and Red Rum is the winner and Crisp is second. Les Gargo's just coming up now to be third. It's going to be a very near thing for fourth with Spanish Steps just being fourth as his dam was once. Rouge Autumn is fifth and six Hurricane Rock and seven is Proud Tarquin and then comes Prophecy and behind. Prophecy is Endless Folly and Black Secret and then Petruccio's son and the Pooker and Great Noise. And so the result of the 1973 National is first number eight, Red Rum, owned by 85-year-old Mr. Noel Lemaire, trained at Southport by Don McCain and written by 25-year-old Brown Fletcher. Second is number one, Crisp, owned by Sir Chester Manifold, trained by Fred Winter and written by Richard Pittman. And third is number two, Lescargo, owned by Mr. Raymond Guest, trained by Dan Moore and written by Tommy Carberry and just passing the line now unscathed are Green Plover, Sonny Ladd and Go Continental. All those three having finished as well and Mildor is going to be last. Just three quarters of a length and 25 lengths as we see for the second time in his life Brown Fletcher returning to the winner's circle after a Grand National. He won it at his second attempt on Red Alligator having been third on his first ride. This was his sixth, and this is how he and Red Rum finally wore down the gallant bit of Crisp, the 12-stone top weight, to make it all. Crisp, 
His attention has begun to wander. He's lost concentration as he approaches the furlong marker, but now he's plainly getting tired. His legs turning to lead now. 12 stone in the saddle and red rum with 12, 10 stone five, just wearing him down as they come to the line. And red rum is the winner of a thrilling grand national. Twenty-five years old, on a locally trained horse, who's getting the most tremendous reception. After fulfilling the lifetime ambition of his 85-year-old stock porter, as the happiest man at Liverpool today, Brown Fletcher. The dream come true. Brian Fletcher, in the most coveted spot in a steeplechase junkie's life. The winning score. And the little hero is not a big one. And what a great triumph for Don or Ginger McCain, as he's known, in only his fourth season with a public trainer's license. This little horse bought for 6,000 guineas at Doncaster, since when Ginger McCain has won five races in a row with him. And he's wearing the sash of honor now, placed on him by James Bidwell Tucker. The starting price is first Red Rum, 9 to 1 co-favorite, second Crisp, the 9 to 1 co-favorite, third Lescargo, 11 to 1, and fourth, Spanish Steps, 16 to 1. That's Ginger McCain. If you've got a color set, you'll appreciate how he gets his nickname. Great moment for him. He's always had confidence in this horse. As no Lemaire with uh, Mrs. Topham presenting him with the trophy. I'm very pleased to give it to you, but I'm very proud of our very famous trophies. There's no one I'd like to have it better than you, because I know how you tried. <laughs> and I've tried for this for a long, long time. I know, it's a life's ambition. And I've got it. <laughs> in the winning spot for the second time, in his career. Only his sixth ride, he's won twice and been third once. What a record. Here he is with David Coleman. Brian, that must be the most unbelievable Grand National. Well, unbelievable in the sense that for a while I thought I wasn't going to catch Chris. But in another sense, Red Room was strongly fancied. And we thought it would go exceptionally well. But I, I was very worried crossing the main road. Chris was so fine in front of me. I thought right, I'm going to have to be going to catch him, catch him but a very game horse, jumped very well, a very game horse. How far do you reckon Chris was away from you? It looked an awful, awful long way. Crossing the Mellon Road, he would, he'd be 25 lengths in front of me. But I knew when he jumped the last, he was stopping. I knew that I would all be in one if I jumped the last. I would catch him because he was stopping. Brian, we're two flanches fences out here, and uh, did you really think you'd got a hope? Yes, I saw because I knew. <clears throat> knew from, from behind that Chris was stopping. And here we go, you know, I jumped in the second last and I knew I didn't realize Chris would stop as quickly, but going to the last, he, his tail began to go and I thought, well, I'll keep going and I'll win. But he stopped very quickly, you know. He but even now, Dick Pittman's working. Yes, he, he's, he's very tired there, look, John. Very tired. Now look, he's not going, no, he's not getting anywhere. And when my horse senses that he's not going away and leaving him, he's, 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 you know, he's quick on the, on the ball. Were you aware, Brian, how hard Dick Pittman was working then? No. Yes, well, from the last I knew, all being well, I would catch him, because he was hard at him, you know, and he wasn't, he wasn't finding any, at the elbow there, he wavered a bit, and I thought, well, this is it. But it's, it uh, certainly looks a long way on the television here, boy. But at this stage, you were running out of time, really, weren't you? Yes, uh, the post was coming too quickly, but Chris was stopping very quickly. Yes. He stopped, and my horse is a very game horse. 
Who the game horse? There you see when he realizes crisp stopping, he runs more. The very game genuine horse. There we are, hooray. There's the post. There's the post. And you realize you'd won once you'd got there. Yes, oh yes, yes, yes. Yes, I did. Very, very game horse, very, very, very fine horner. This, this man deserves to win. Well, we'll be talking to Mr. Lemaire. In fact, Mr. Lemaire ought to join us. Uh, Mr. Lemaire, 85 now, are you? And spent uh, £100,000 on trying to win the Grand National. Don't, don't is that true or that. not? Don't say it. <laughs> it's embarrassing. But is it really true or not? Absolutely. <laughs> How you, true? You, you, you keep uh, two horse, horses a year for the last 15 years and follow them, pay for them, keep them and all that business, a hundred thousand is chicken. Now, Mr. Lemaire, where did you see the race from? When? Did the race now? The county stand. And did you feel you weren't going to get to Chris? When? When Chris got so far away? Well, my son had his glasses on and he said to me he's going to catch him. And I'd had a good talk to this boy before, and I had said, win if you can, but come home safe. And that did it for him. Okay. He knew he hadn't somebody who said, thrash the thing until you can kill it. Okay. Well, Mr. Mr. Le Maire's a very good owner. He's not one of these chaps in racing that talks through the pocket. He's a very good owner to ride for, and I wish you were more like him. Well, uh, Marvellous win, Mr. Mayor. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Now, coming back to you, Brian, of course, uh, being involved in the thick of it from the start, I mean, was the early pace as fast as it looked when Chris went away with Grayson Barrow? Yes, it was a very fast race, a very fast race. Uh, I didn't want to lie, lie as handy as I, I was doing, but I realised Chris was a long way in front and he would not come back barring the fall. And that's the only reason I, I, I was as handy as I was, you know? Mm. And, and I had to win the day because... I had to win the day because my mother's here to see me. <laughs> Actually, Mrs. Fletcher, mother of the only uh, jockey now, I think, uh, in the race to have won the Grand National twice. Well, uh, I don't know, but this is a fantastic mother, and I wish I could do more for her. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> You've done everything, lad. Do you think I ought to ask you whether you had a bet on the race? Yes, yeah. definitely. Had a bet on Grand. Actually, just before we talk anymore, I think there's uh, Mrs. Robertson of BP, the sponsors, Wants to give you some money anyway, Brian, because there's a check here for £500, Mrs. Robertson, is it, for the winning jockey? Cheers. Thank you very much, ma'am. marvellous race. Thank you. Super. Thank you. Thank Lovely. you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> right, now, did Mum have a bet or not? Yes, I had a small bet on Brian. I couldn't let him go around that track without helping him along the road. <laughs> uh, did you think he wasn't going to get there? Me, I knew, I, I knew without any shadow of doubt that it was any look at all, Brian would be there. You know what he said to me here before the race, do you? What? I don't want to talk about having a good <laughs> chance. <laughs> yes, well, it's entry is entry, and he's a very much fully sized horse, and I'm not the chap, sort of chap that likes horses to be fully sized or jockeys, and I was just content with getting getting a clear run round. Actually, did you have any problems anywhere, Brian? At all? The horse seemed to jump well. Jump very well, very well. He never really, apart from one, one mistake down the back, he jumped foot perfect, foot perfect. Judging by the uh, way the loose race looked on the box with Chris going away, there was no time for talk on the way around. No, it was a fantastic run race, the, one of the fastest nationals I've ever ridden in. Really what, good. what about the really big fences like Beaches and uh, the Chair and uh, Valentine's and the water? You had no problems? No problems, I jumped exceptionally well. I met Beaches right both times and I got to the far side and I nodded a wee bit but jumped very safely. The canal turn jumped that well. Valentine's, very well, I jumped very well. I couldn't say anything, any, any other, other words. Great, Brian, well done, your second national. This yeah. is even better than the last? Well, I wouldn't say that, but they, they both began with red, so let's hope the next one is. <laughs> I've got one reason for asking that. I, we, we heard you were getting £6,000 if you won. Well, I'm getting a, a considerable amount of money. I don't want to disclose how much. Let's hope, we, we, let's hope I'm a wealthy man, any road. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank well you, done, Mum. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, actually, with a bit of luck, Mrs. Robertson of BP is waiting to give you 
special present there, and I think he also gets a thousand pounds of winning credit. Thank there. you very, very much, Mrs. Robertson. No, delighted. Thank you very much. I think you're entitled. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> you better check. The, better check that there's something inside. Oh, uh, well, we'd not worry about that. <laughs> oh. Uh, but I like the way you described the fitness of the horse and his attitude before the race. Yes. He's very, you know, he'd done everything we asked him to do, et up every oat, and I'd been very hard on him, and I, I thought, well, I've got this chance. I, well, I, was, I was severe on the horse, and he kept coming back and eating and jumping and kicking. Very gay, bright horse, you know. And I thought, he'll run away from the manger if I'm getting on top of him, and he didn't. We gave him a fur old gallop yesterday, and I was a little bit worried after it, but he shot to the manger as soon as he, you know, lunchtime, and... He, he, well, he, we knew he was tremendously well. We did, really did. Yeah. When you say as a personality, just develop his personality for us. Oh, he's a tremendous character. I mean, when you work out, he's eight years old. He's been at it since he was a two-year-old. He dead heated in a cellar here in March as a two-year-old. Two-year-old cellar. Now, what horse trains on from that? And yet, he, 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 as I say, he's got this tremendous vitality, willingness to do anything. Cocky fella comes out, jumps and kicks. Can't get on top of him. You know, uh, don't want to do mind you, but you know, you cannot. He's... he's he, well, he's, he's tremendous. He really is. I'm not just saying that. I, I know how much you fancied him. But yes, even yes. you must have had doubts for that fantastic run by Chris. Oh, I did. I thought, mind you, I thought if we can get within 10 or 12 lengths at him at the last, I thought we might collar him, because I thought my fellow would tattle him all the way, or would try to, and I just was hoping that they might just, you know, the, the weight and the distance might just leg bitches on his chap. And I think that's what did it, too. It was just a question of whether he post came too soon, really. Yes, I know, but you've got to have a winning post sooner or later, yeah. haven't you? You know, it's, uh, unfortunately, he came dead at the right time. Actually, while you're still here, and while you're both here, I mean, you're both professionals. I mean, yeah. poor Dick Pittman, who must have had the right of his life. Ryan is a professional. I'm a glorified amateur. You're a glorified yeah. amateur. Yes. <laughs> yes. Ryan, poor Dick Pittman, who must have had the right of his life there. Yes. You wouldn't be in his shoes at this moment, would you? I mean, nothing I you could do I certainly wouldn't. He was caught on the post. He jumped exceptionally well. It was that fine front at one stage in the race, and I was sort of chasing to keep in touch. I thought, well, by and fall, Richard will take all the beating. And then, <clears throat> going to the last, I, thought, I, was, I still thought he would hang on. But when he jumped the last, he folded a wee bit, and he folded badly at the, at the elbow. And I knew that if I kept going, when my horse realised that the horse in front was, was slowing up, he went more it was and chase, more. Chase, yeah, chase, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? was yeah. chase. And he'd only a very tough horse would have got very to tough, yeah, yeah. How do you like this fellow, having tried the night or whatever? Well, back here with me, Dick Pittman, right of the second, who must be the most disappointed man in the world. I've got over it now. We've had a breather, but uh, what a hell of a ride, you know. It is disappointing. We were beaten in the Gold Cup, now beaten in the National, but the horse has run his heart out. I mean, basically, he came here a non-stayer, and I've made every inch of the running. But I thought uh, that he would be keen, you know. He's run a great race, jumped well, faltered. I could hear Brian coming, desperately the post was getting farther and farther away, not nearer, you know. Poor old horse faltered, but I was tired, I mean, uh, just from hanging on to his head. So it isn't all his fault, you know, I was tired as well. But nothing you could possibly do about it? Well, uh, I did almost what Pendle did at Cheltenham, you know, after the last, he's, he's done that. He's faltered and gone the opposite way for a while, lost mom all momentum. But. Uh, you know, I mean, what a great race he's run. Fantastic. Tremendous. He jumped beaches like a hurdle the second time. You got so far away, actually, it looked to be only you in the race, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't hear anyone. I, uh, David Nicholson said to me at Beach's second time, kick on, you'll win, and good luck. As he was walking back, you know, it's great. Marvellous. Giving you the best ride you've had in years, I would have thought, around there. Yes, I had a great ride on Steel Bridge. I was second on him, beating a fair way, but what a thrill this was. Fantastic. Good.